Well, it's clear that the Chinese government is serious about promoting bike share programs. According to environmental news agency EcoWatch, three of the world's eight best bike sharing programs are in China, namely Hangzhou, Taiyuan and Shanghai. The rapid growth of bike sharing companies is also attracting a diverse set of investors, from Chinese smartphone giant Xiaomi to Russian billionaire Yuri Milner. Now, one of the bike sharing companies drawing major interest is Beijing-based startup Ofo, which raised $130 million in recent funding. Now, Ofo's main rival, Mobike, founded by former Uber executive David Wang, raised $10 million in August. All right, for more on China's bike sharing programs and their future, I'm joined by Yu Zhang, live from Tampa in the U.S. state of Florida. She's an associate professor of civil and environmental engineering at the University of South Florida. Welcome, Professor Yu. Hi, thank you for having me. Now, bike sharing has been around for over a decade in several countries, but it really seems to be taking off as the sharing economy overall blossoms. Why are we seeing this surge in bike sharing? Um... I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. I'm asking, why are we seeing this surge in bike sharing? Since it's not a recent phenomenon, it has been around for over, for over a decade. Why do you think it's really yes. taking off now? I think there are several reasons. Um, when we look into China, because um, this program has talked about lots of things happening in China. For China, uh, it used to be the kingdom of the bicycle. So lots of people have the capability of riding a bicycle. And also in China, as um, you know, we have seen that the congestion become really severe problem. And for riding a bicycle sometimes actually is a, a better alternative way, especially for the short distance travel. And also in China, when uh, we have the station-based bicycle try to co-locate the bicycle stations with the um, bus stops, actually it provides a good way for solving the last mile problem and that can uh, encourage people to use the public transportation. And in China, they're owning their own bicycle. One is, I think, a bike theft issue. It's not only issue in China, but also the issue in many other countries as well. Another thing is uh, with the new development, uh, new development, we have seen that um, we do not have so many uh, bicycle garages in China right. as old days. And so lack of the space to store in the bicycles at home. So, give, so given all these factors of why people are now turning to bike sharing, give us an idea, how big is the size of the market in China? Um, I personally do not uh, work in the market analysis area, but from the conferences I attend, from the conversation with my friends in China, I was always told that the market is huge and uh, the demand is there and many of cities are interested in having a bike sharing program. And we also know there are lots of funds available in the market looking for the investment opportunities and they want to get into this business. Now obviously bikes are, but what are some of the other motivations? You mentioned things like, like fitness as opposed to it just being a cheaper way to travel. What are some of the trends you're seeing? Um, yeah, fitness certainly people are more care about the health, you know, um, and uh, uh, another thing is um, certainly there are still a, a percentage of population in China cannot afford the car. So the bicycle become a cost effective alternative way for them to get around. And um, as I also mentioned, uh, in China, they have really good connected public transportation network. So uh, the bike sharing actually adds another layer into the network and they realize the door-to-door -door seamless multimodal transportation service. Now what about some of the challenges that you're seeing? Say the, the demand for this service really goes up. What are some of the things infrastructure-wise you're seeing that are really put in place to keep up with the demand? Yes, uh, when the demand surge up, um, the, uh, it's very challenging to operate the system. Um, we have seen there are different generations of uh, the bike sharing systems. So the most popular one currently is the station-based. It's and users can go there and borrow and return the bicycles. We also see in the mobile bike as well as like a social bicycle in the U.S. Uh, that is more called uh, free floating or called a station free. So um, the, the users can find the locations of the bicycle from the smart app and uh, they ha because they have the uh, built-in GPS to track the locations of right. the bicycles. Yeah, um, but the challenges is now if you 
uh, lets the bicycle going freely in the region, then it's hard to kind of match the dynamically change the demand. So you have to have uh, close, you have to closely monitor and um, monitor the usage of the bicycle, knowing the unusable bicycle, which could be malfunctioned or run of the battery. Right. And you also um, have the uh, strategies to um, let them self-balancing the bicycles to do more like uh, rebalance, sure that the supply and the demand could match. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your insights. That was Associate Professor Yu Zhang of Civil Engineering, Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of South Florida.